No, I think there's a lot of things that are happening out there that, that are going to change the, the industry. The industry, I think, is, is improving. I think Uber was a bit of a wake-up call to the industry. But there are things happening across the country uh, with litigation um, in California, Massachusetts, which could, could change Uber, the TMC's business model. That there's a strong likelihood that their drivers are going to be determined to be employees and not independent contractors, which is going to drive their costs up. What's happening in Houston today that's hurting the taxi industry is that there is predatory pricing going on. You've got a company in, the, in Uber that last year of $415 million of revenue lost $470 million. They had $470 million of expenses. They are losing tens of millions of dollars, but they're offering transportation to the city of Houston for 45 and 50 percent less than cab fare. And the cab fare was calculated by the city to what was reasonable for the citizens to pay for that transportation and what what's needed for drivers to make a good living. The only reason that Uber is charging 50% is to try to put cab industry out of business. They are taking customers out of the back of cabs, putting them in the backs of Ubers, and doing that at a loss. Um, that it's not fair and it's not legal. All right, thank you, sir. Council Member Laster. Thank you for your testimony, Mr. Gibbons. Uh, uh, for me, it's always been about two issues. Number one, um, uh, fair competition. Uh, and number two, public safety. And uh, as, as I have had the privilege to travel around the world and be in taxi cabs or car, cars for hire around the world, in any city I've ever gone into, there's always this expectation there. You, you know who the cab driver is, you see their picture, you see their registration, you know that you have an expectation of what's going to happen if you have a problem. And so there's an industry-wide or a worldwide industry standard of expectation about that. I think what the thing that we are confronted by at this point in time is now that the industry is being uprooted in the people that, such as the Ubers of the world, who just <coughs> do not want to provide the kinds of public safety regimens that we have come to expect. And I, I think that's going to be an ongoing discussion as the public encounters Drivers that aren't licensed, drivers that don't have uh, um, insurance, drivers that have not inspected their cars, they're going to have a, a serious uh, response to that. Uh, and towards that end, Mary, if I could ask uh, again, Ms. Edmondson, how far are we away from being able to uh, share with the public the total amount of Uber licensees that are currently existing? The city right now, I know Uber has fought the, to prohibit the public from knowing that information. We're still currently in joint from doing that. Um, I know there are discussions between Uber and the AG's office uh, regarding the settlement, but that would not that would not help us. Well, it, it, for those of us who believe that public information is public information, uh, what would be the downside if the city were to just release that information? That's what we can advise. I, I didn't ask you to do that. I'm just asking what would be the downside. There would be criminal sanctions involved. Though. That's important to know. <laughs> <laughs> They've already gone to court to stop us. I, I get that. I understand that. But I, I think the more that we have this public discussion, it's important. Because there is clearly entrance into our transportation market that don't want our citizens to know who their employees are or their contract employees are or who they are. Uh, and, and, and I think that is continues to provide a serious public safety problem. And I would uh, I appreciate all the efforts that the legal department is undertaking to push that issue because I think we have a minimum our citizens ought to know how many Uber licensees, how many any licensees we have in the city. Are. Thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you. Councilor Lester, the administration agrees with you totally, and, and uh, it sounds to me that. You know, I always thought Republicans believed in the free market and, and public information and public discussion, <coughs> but we are waiting for the uh, Attorney General to, to rule. Council Member Brett. Thank you, Mr. Cambridge, is it fair to say that the, 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 the clients, the citizens, the, the riders in the transportation industry, they are changing their expectations as well. You know, there are, are guidelines in place and measures in place that we consider precautions or, or safety parameters, but, but, but oh, around the city. I don't I don't know. I don't have enough to cast our first. If there's no 
objection you may continue. What's well, simple is, isn't it fair to say that the riders across uh, America and the free world, they are changing their expectations as well. They are not expecting, many of them, the standards that were in place in years past to be held anymore. They want the industry to evolve also. Is that correct? And, and if that's true, what is the industry doing to meet that change in expectation on the part of the riders? I think there is a, a certain section of the ridership that's looking for the Uber experience using the app. And what the taxi industry needs to do and is working towards is a, is a global app. One app, if we had one app that every cab in the city was on and everybody could participate and have some joint dispatching, that's the way the ta taxi industry needs to evolve to be competitive. We've got the, between Yellow Cab and Lone Star Cab, we've got the ability for a, a nominal, nominal amount to get every independent driver signed up with us, and they could be on the same platform, and we could just be dispatching to every car in the city. I think that's something we need to talk, and we have talked to ARA about, I think that's a direction that we need to, to head, because that would give us the ability, regardless of what company it was, if a customer called and wanted a cab, they want the closest cab. So all the fares are the same. So if it was on the pen or the Lone Star because the yellow doesn't make any difference. If the cab can be there in two or three minutes, that's going to be very competitive with what the Uber is doing. Thank you for your response. Thank you, Mary, colleagues, for the extension. Thank you for bringing that, Mr. Chairman. And, and as you rightly said, ARA is very interested in seeing this, the industry move in that direction. So I think that's the kind of one thing that may, that may save it. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> and Mr. Roy Hill. 